Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Liverpool and a lot of you have been getting in touch with me to talk about this story that has made the papers. The Liverpool Echo has done a story on a guy called Wesley Brown. They say he's a former gang member and he belonged to the Crockstuff crew that is a notorious gang in the Liverpool area. He goes on to say that he's trying to launch a rap career from behind bars and I'm sure that many of you will remember that I covered the previous story of Jordan when he was starting his career from behind bars and of course a lot of people do start to rap when they're in prison mainly just due to boredom etc and I thought it would be interesting to break down what it's about. He goes on to say in the paper that his lyrics focus on his links to the Crockstuff gang and his past and it contains lines such as Wes Brown shot man from the shin to the backbone and just before I put them down with the coat I had to test the whap on ducks by the river alt that's Crockstuff the back block you know that the barrel on the Mac flash like a Kodak or the barrel on the John flash like a camera a man like shotgun Bob probably hammered you but you know what it did the fight back the chrome Wes Brown shot man up from the shin to the backbone and as a teen I was left to just roam but round the time I did I just stole yes G while he remains in jail currently at the moment, they say that he's filmed this and uploaded it to YouTube. The song that they're talking about has recently been released on Link Up TV and it features a rapper called Mazza and both of them are currently in prison. So obviously this has caused a bit of upset in the prison system. The police have said the Ministry of Justice, they have logged a request to get this video taken down. They say the music video was created on the estates in Crockstuff and it involved quad bikes and scramblers and it was a well produced music video. It definitely gave me vibes of Jordan's song with Ard Ads when he was in prison as well. So I'm not sure if he's inspired by that or he's took some sort of inspiration. It says in the music video they're wearing t-shirts such as Free Wes B and Free Lloydy, references to Ryan Lloyd who was a Crockstuff crew gang member. He was jailed for life for organising the murder of Strand gang rival Liam Smith. And this happened moments after they say a fight occurred in Alt Course Prison's visiting area back in 2006. Lloyd was sentenced to 28 eight years in prison for his role in that shooting. In a separate video, Wesley Brown, whose rapping name is Wezavelli, performs a freestyle rap in prison where he talks about any disrespect then Wes murder man straight and describes testing guns on ducks in the River Alt. He appears to be wearing grills in prison, which is a piece of jewellery that is worn over the top of your teeth. And these are filmed on mobile phones that are illicit in prison. And he actually had a reputation for a mobile phone smuggling ring where he was bringing in Zanko phones in 2017 in Strange Ways Prison in Manchester. The mini mobile phones in prison are worth a lot of money and they can be worth hundreds of pounds. It also says that Wes Brown was once shot himself in a drive-by attack in 2003 and he was ordered to serve a minimum of three years and 50 weeks after being found guilty of possession of a firearm without a certificate and possessing a firearm with intent back in 2006. In 2004, he was found guilty of possessing a prohibited weapon, a self-loading rifle, so a semi-automatic, and possessing a firearm also that was prohibited. Brown was also caught brandishing guns and bullets with other Crocksmith crew members on footage that was played to a jury. Ryan Lloyd was also on trial for conspiracy to possess firearms and ammunition with intent to endanger life in 2006 also. The case heard of a violent feud between the Crockstuff and Norris Green Gang that would continue for years and caught in the crossfire of that gang war was innocent schoolboy Reese Jones, who was killed in 2007. Prosecutor in Ryan Lloyd's case told the jurors that youths were stopped in the area and they were found to be wearing body armour and carrying guns and gunshots were fired at a house of Crockstuff crew members, which resulted in letters being written from jail, making threats to kill the Norris Green gang. The prosecution in the court case said this is not a petty feud, and this is a very serious gang war, and the use of firearms and children wearing body armour is not to be undermined. They say that it's getting very popular in Liverpool prisons, that they're taking up music as a way to cope with the time. And from watching his music video in relation to that,
Of course, the production isn't the best. The vocal quality is in prison, so it's not going to be done to the best of its ability. And there is a lot of criticism about it. But I'm sure when he comes out of prison and gets into a proper studio, and if he goes down the angles that Jordan did in relation to talking about something people can relate to, then he may be able to do quite well. The video at the moment on Link Up has got 30,000 views. And in it as well, he pays respect to his brother and mentions him and shows his gravestone. So I thought it would be interesting to find out who his brother was and a little bit more about his story. It turns out that his brother is called Blake Brown and he was murdered in a professional hit in 2016. He was shot at close range on Southwood Road next to St Michael's train station and two men lay in wait for him and shot him as he entered his bail hostel shortly after he'd been released from prison. They say that he was shot by the two men after he was dropped off by his brother. They said this was a plot to kill the Crockstuff man who they believed had been involved in a murder that he'd been cleared of. A key witness described how two men were seen carrying handguns when they approached Blake Brown. When watching a video of the police interview that was played to the jury in the court, the onlooker said that there was a short conversation and he told the policeman there were two people. One person said it sounded like a boy, 18, and there was both local. They both had guns and they were both dressed in black. One person said, are you Blake? And the other one said, you die. That person shot him three times. The witness said that he was living in the bail hostel also at the time and that he heard a bang, bang, bang and then it was over. Blake just fell down and then girls came rushing over to where he was lay. They say that the court had heard that in 2006, the same year that his brother had been sent to prison, Blake had been found not guilty for the murder of a man called Paul Mooney in 2004. Somebody said that this may have been revenge for that death, even though he was cleared of that case. So my condolences to Wesley and his family for the loss of his brother in that situation. And it definitely goes to show that he's been through a lot in his life. And the Crockstuff crew has got a big history and it goes back very far, even back to 2004 when the Royal Oak murder of a person that they said was one of the leaders of the Crockstuff crew. His name was Danny McDonald and he was shot four times at point blank range in what they believe was a gang attack. 17 years later to the day this year and nobody has ever been convicted of that murder. So I say my condolences to the family of Danny McDonald as well and I really want to hear what people have to say on this story this is a really interesting story I'll be back again very shortly with some more news please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe peace